pear-shaped. Pathetic. Pear -shaped. Contract revoked. What's that up in the sky? What's that dropping from the sky? You see that? What is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that? On today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show, Starblood Arena just got an expiration date. Some juicy gossip over on or slash vibe. Firewall dominates 2018. PSVR leads the charge for virtual reality. And finally, we got some dreams news. Now let's get to the intro. Hey there, lads and ladies. Welcome to episode number six of the Pumpkin Patch Show, the only PS VR show on the internet that will actually increase the size of your penis or vagina by watching it, so be very careful. I'm Petrifying Pumpkins, and as always, I'm joined by a very special host. Uh, today's host is, of course, Tosuki. How are you doing, Tosuki? It's always a pleasure to see you. Hello, this is David Sigerson, also known as Tasuki227. Well, that's a very nice cat. I'm afraid you've only got six months left to live. So if you're a fan of the arena shooter Star Blood Arena by White Moon Studios on PSVR, then you should definitely play it now while you have the chance, because unfortunately the servers for that game are going to shut down in July of this year, and you simply won't be able to play it anymore. In a recent post over on or slash PSVR by White Moon Studio CEO J Kutarapalili Kutarap Kutarap Kutarapalil Kutarapalil He details the regret that he and his team feel over the decision that was made. And while he does say that he doesn't want to see anyone throwing hate towards Sony's direction, he does do a bit of digging himself towards Sony. Firstly, he mentions that Sony gave them no option at all to keep the servers running themselves. And he also re expressed regret that he and his team did not own the Star Blood Arena IP and that if they did, that things might be different. He also states that back when Star Blood Arena launched, that it had zero marketing and zero PR support from Sony. So this is kind of a big amount of shade I feel like he's thrown that way. However, he does say that hopefully this will not be the last we see of White Moon Studios. So fingers crossed that these lads will get back on their feet and come back to PSVR at some point in the future, bigger and better than ever. Because you know, it's always sad to see this kind of thing happen. Nobody wants to see games dying anywhere. Also, I myself bought Starblood Arena back near launch, so we should definitely stream that on the channel soon. Between now and July, we'll get a few games in, I'm sure. Like, oh my god, what a total bitch. So hey, Tosuki, how do you feel about like internet drama and you know, stuff like that? Does that like, does that get you off? Are you interested in that at all or, or what? Ah, oh, boo boo. Right, I get it, you have a cat, Jesus. Now I just asked that because there's some juicy drama going on over on the subreddit or slash vibe right now. It's kind of bizarre. So over there right now you've got a moderator over there and he seems to be a bit power hungry or he's having a power trip or something. He is banning VR developers from the subreddits for like nitpicky reasons. Uh, the rule I think is not you're not allowed to promote stuff on the subreddits. And technically, when these developers go there and they talk about their games, they're promoting it. So, like, that seems very wrong. And they're being banned for that reason. That just seems absolutely ridiculous. You don't want to be cutting off communication between, you know, developers and the people who follow the developers. It seems very counterintuitive. This guy seems like a bit of a fucking, I don't know what. I don't know what he seems like. Apparently, they've got a quote here from Upload VR who covered this fiasco, we'll call it. Uh, one of his quotes is that uh, he holds the face of the Vive community in his hands and then just stuff like that. I don't know if he's trolling, I don't know if he sincerely, you know, gets off on this, but uh, very strange. But look, that's why we went with PSVRs instead of Vives. People who went for the Vives instead of the PSVRs, you know, they're bound to be a bit, you know, loopy in the head. Something's not right with them. But still, he's doing that subreddit absolutely no favors at all. Firewall is the hero that we need and deserve. 
So Firewall has done very well in 2018 according to the NPD Retail Tracking Service. Firewall was the number one best-selling PSVR game for all of 2018. Now keep in mind that doesn't even include the digital sales. This is just retail only and this only applies to North America of course NPD they only cover North America. Farpoint came in second place and somehow Bravo team came in third place because there's just no accounting for taste. So are you happy to see Firewall at number one there, Tsuki? What, what do you think about that? Just calm down, I'm sorry, please. Please calm down. I'm sorry. PSVR is the hero that we need and deserve. So a few days ago, Super Data revealed their figures for the, t the big headsets and how they performed in the last year. They stated that the PSVR had a strong holiday period where it sold over 700,000 units and that officially means that it overtook the Samsung Gear and it is now the market leader for VR in general. It's undisputed now. So the overall VR annual revenue, including all the headsets, that increased by 30%. That exceeded all the optimistic expectations that were there. So the next time someone tells you, you know, VR's dead, VR's a gimmick, you can go show them this, and then you can tell them to eat shit because, you know, the numbers don't lie. Dreams can come true. So you may already know about the Dreams closed beta that is currently going on. Now unfortunately, I myself never got my beta code. I, I barely even cried about that, so don't even worry about it. But those who are lucky enough to get into the beta, they got to experience all the cool shit that people have been making and they get to make cool shit themselves. But they were never allowed to talk about it because there was an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement in place. No sharing of videos or screenshots or streaming or any of that. Now there was a few exceptions where people broke the NDAs and they didn't seem to be taken down for a while. But that doesn't matter anymore because now Media Molecule or Sony, probably Sony, have lifted the NDA on Dreams so you can just freely go look, search YouTube videos, people have been uploading stuff, people are streaming. Go check that stuff out, I've seen some cool stuff already. And keep in mind, this game is going to have VR support and it's probably going to come out soon enough because, you know, this is beta, everyone's got nothing but good things to say about this beta. I imagine it's going to be a first half of the year release, maybe May, maybe June, something like that. But it's coming soon, it's going to have PS VR support on day one. So definitely look into that. That game might be the game of the year of 2019 for VR. In general. So hey Tsuki, if you had dreams, like what kind of game or what kind of thing would you make in dreams? Well lads and ladies, that's it for this episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show. Now before I go, let me give a big thanks to my Patreon supporters who are on screen right here. Let me give them a nice rub. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your support. I appreciate that. If you want to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description. But if you don't want to give me any money at all, you can still help me out by doing all the usual shice, like liking the video, sharing us, and stuff like that. I appreciate that very much as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.